Welcome to the new JFK show number 295. We have the great pleasure of having Dr. David Mantic, one of the top JFK researchers in the world. We've got Larry Rivera, one of the top JFK researchers in the world. And we've got Jim Fetzer, one of the top JFK researchers in the world. And I'm Gary Hi. King, and I'm really proud to be here. And we're going to turn it over to Larry and Dr. David Manick. They've got a show. Oh, you kind of. Uh, Jim, Let me Jim, add, Jim. I think if we, if we had David Lift in here and Doug Horn and John Costello, we'd have pretty close to a shutout. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really. I mean, the, the, uh, but David, you have been doing such sensational work from the beginning, way back in 1992. Did you ever imagine this journey would carry you to this destination? No, I could not see that far. That that's truly extraordinary to think about that. I thought this would maybe a, be a year or two, but it's been way, way beyond that. Not only that, but of course, at the time you were myopic, and believe it or not, that was a sensational benefit. That was an the incredible advantage study. that no one else had. Mm -hmm. David, it was a huge advantage. I mean, you know, I had the physics sure background, and knew about optical densitometry, but because your eyesight was so constricted. Well, I was could... almost blind. Yeah, That's you why I could see what was going on in the films and the X-ray films. <laughs> just, just amazing. Just mm -hmm. amazing how what one might have thought was a handicap turned out in this set of circumstances. Yeah, I, mean, I, I often yeah. wonder who arranged that. <laughs> who was that? <laughs> it was wonderful. How, how, would, how would you compare uh, the case today where it stands versus when you first came out in uh, The Men Who Killed Kennedy, Dr. Well, Martin. as I said in this book, uh, it, it's amazing how little the public knew in 1963, but almost as amazing is how much more we know now than we did even 10 years ago, right. to say right. nothing of 30 years ago. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and, definitely come a long way. And there's a, still a lot of detractors out there, but we're fighting on anyhow. Uh, well, the well, problem, I, I think uh, the propaganda onslaught has been so massive, David, is so stunning that here you had the day of the assassination, NBC, the other major network, were reporting two shots, a small, clean puncture wound to the throat, and a shot to the right temple that blew his brains out the back of his head. You got Malcolm Kildup, the acting press secretary, saying that's the same <laughs> right through the head. And then yep. you got the word report, and there are no shots from in front. I mean, isn't that staggering? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Malcolm Kildeff pretty much told us the story. He didn't report a shot from the school book depository on that day. He did not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. You, know, but, you, you put together the what the FBI and the Secret Service concluded that day. There had been three shots with three hits. You know, the back, five and a half inches below the collar, about shallow shot, far as second knuckle of your little finger, the Connolly shot in the back, JFK shot in the back of the head. You put that together with the two shots being reported on the networks all afternoon and evening, and you got four shots that were legitimate. How, how well, could they conceal that, David? I mean, it's just amazing. Well, we know that both Connollys agreed with what you just said, and so did Jackie Kennedy. They were there. They heard what was happening. They saw what was happening. Mm -hmm. Poor Jackie has suffered such a dire fate. Some people even think Jackie shot Jack, which is about as dumb as it gets, but it's one of those myths that seems to endure. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. I'm actually on 153 News going on about Bill Cooper saying that the driver turned around and shot him, and people are really yeah. believing that. And it's amazing how many people believe that it was all a big production, basically like Sandy Hook, and nothing really happened. <laughs> I'm telling you that there's a lot of people that believe that. And Have so you run into that, David, people saying they thought the whole thing was staged? No, that's pretty uncommon in my experience. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know much of anything, first of all. And those <laughs> that do <laughs> tend to be a little more sensible than that. Yeah. Of course, if you looked at all the all the fake fake evidence and even body doubles and all that, I mean, uh, there's a you could put together a case that there was a lot of fabrication, but not the assassination itself being nothing but a. Yeah, we can put that into the wastebasket. I think. Yeah. Well, we yeah, we, we all we're way beyond do, that. but it's it's just surprising that there. It seems to be resistant, you know, 
Like a vampire. Well, knowing human beings as well as we do now after investigating this case, nothing should surprise us anymore. Yeah, yeah. So yes. many years. So many years. Gary, Gary, you want to squeeze that question. You got, I got you off. Go ahead. I was just saying that it's amazing how many... Look, we all know that there's been lots of false flag events that were completely fabricated and there were no truth to them at all. But I'm telling you that more and more people are falling for these uh, outlet, just like JFK was um, no different than Sandy Hook. I mean, it's really happening. And people saying that the sewer, sewer, um, Secret Service shot him from behind by accident. This stuff keeps going out there and we have to basically fight, fight, out, fight against absurdity like that. Well, keep it up. It's unfortunate that we have to do that. That should have been buried ages ago. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't I mean, agree more. I mean, so, so uh, if we can get into the book at all, what what yeah. is this uh, volume now different from? How does it make it different from the one that you published uh, about the medical evidence uh, a couple of years ago, uh, spe uh, specifically the Harper fragment and where where it came from? I saw that you integrated some of that information into the new book. Can you tell us about that? Well, when Jerome, who, who likes to be called Jerry Corsi, contacted me, his goal for this book was to make it a little more accessible to the layman, right? which I, I hope we have achieved. That was our goal. And so there's a little bit more about my personal journey in here, a little more, but more about my timeline, the way things actually unraveled. I've never really done that in any detail before. So it's a little bit more storytelling but it still includes the data that I collected from the National Archives mm -hmm. uh, in context, in the timeline. So uh, I've never really told a story about my experience as such before. So this attempts to do that. I think so, that's great. That, that's great. Maybe you needed a more accessible, reader-friendly version. And I think you and, got it here. Great. Right. And, and how do you explain, for example, the x-rays in the book to that layperson? Well, I focus a lot on that 6.5 millimeter right. object on the frontal X-ray, which lies directly inside JFK's right orbit. This is the thing that nobody saw the night of the autopsy, even though the X-rays were on public display for dozens and dozens of people there. It's clear that they all looked at this and nobody saw it. And yet it's as plain as day. And as I tell in my own story in this book, when I showed these pictures to my seven-year-old son, who, was, who had no training as a radiologist, he spotted it instantly. And then my five-year-old daughter, who had even less training in radiology, hadn't seen what we were doing, walked across the room and looked at it and said, well, what's it supposed to look like? I told her it was... Right. mainly white and she said oh that's it there yeah. oh, that she she found it right away but everybody at the autopsy missed it now how do you explain that it mm -hmm. wasn't there but 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 this no, is it uh, wasn't there at the autopsy of course and we can't <laughs> get some crazy people to admit that even though everybody who was there admits it is it that well, under us before the so arb the radiologists all admitted it so we have to accept that so that's from the premise that they are authentic. What was that? They are. That's from the premise that the uh, X-rays, autopsy X-rays, are authentic. Yeah. Well, they're copies. They're mostly authentic, but they've been okay. modified in critical okay. areas, including the addition in the dark room later on of this six point five millimeter object that right. was not there originally. Superimposed. Correct. Superimposed. It was superimposed as a double exposure in the dark room, and I showed right. how that could be done in that era. Right. No problem. David, when did you sort out the difference between the two headshots? I mean, that was, it was, you know, initially, no, we had the distribution of metallic particles that seemed to be from the same shot, but you gradually realized they were separate and required separate causal origins. Yeah, we're focused on the two frontal shots. And I didn't do that. Doug Horn did that. Mm -hmm. Totally uh, before I caught on to it. Doug really put the pieces together. We know oh, from the x-rays that there had to be a frontal shot high in the forehead above the right orbit at the hairline. 
And we know that for sure because the metallic particles are there on the X-ray. We can't deny that. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. But the problem with that, of course, is that it doesn't explain the blowout in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. It doesn't explain why the motorcycle men were hit by tissue debris behind the limousine. Bobby that could only happen from a separate shot from the right temple, which is distinctly different. Mm -hmm. And both of those shots were observed in Dealey Plaza. That is the damage from those shots, one in the forehead and one in the right temple. Those were observed in Dealey Plaza. We're not just relying on the x-rays for those. Mm -hmm. uh, now, on this shot, particular shot that uh, photos existed of that, because uh, as I recall, Joe O'Donnell saw those uh, photographs. Exactly. Exactly. And and so we have witnesses who saw photographs in the immediate aftermath of the autopsy where those right. wounds were there. And then, of course, we have the story from Quentin Schwinn. Right, right, right. Exactly. In Rochester, right. New York, which is the it was home presented. Of yeah. Who made the films. Yeah. Uh, Quentin saw what really looks to be an authentic JFK autopsy. It looked right. exactly like JFK. And there in that picture, we see in this uh, artist's reconstruction exactly where that temple, sorry, not temple, but the forehead wound above the right eye was located. So that was done under the direction of Quentin Schwinn, who saw the autopsy. The, the parent yeah, went for the interview. Who, who went, we, don't have who, the, we don't have that photograph, of course. We just yeah, have his reconstruction. Quentin Schwinn, who went for the interview, uh, I cite that whole uh, panorama in, in my book exactly like that, you know, so I'm happy that this is uh, picked up and because that all came from J uh, Douglas Horn, obviously. Yeah, D Doug Horn. Uh, well, I think Schwinn contacted Horn initially. That's how that got started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he so said, I got all this very powerful evidence. Yeah. And, and yeah. I questioned Schwinn very closely about the photographic features of this particular film. And Schwinn was a photographic uh, major at the Rochester Institute right. of Technology, I believe it was. So he knew what he was talking about. So I asked him all the detailed questions about it. And it was clearly his impression that this was an authentic autopsy photograph. Uh, the aging of the film was appropriate. The coloration of the film, everything matched what it should. Uh, so are we, uh, so that our audience can, uh, you know, uh, get a picture of uh, what's going on here. We're talking about two shots, one to the temple frontal, and then a little bit more tangential uh, from there. Yes. The, the one was uh, at the hairline in the forehead on the right side of the forehead, but uh, at the hairline. So it's well above the eye. And, right. and many people who were in the emergency room did not see it because it was obscured by JFK's hair. hair. Yeah. But Dr. Crenshaw saw it in the emergency room, and he reported this uh, live on television. Yeah, I've and seen so that interview. a picture of him doing that in our book. You can see Crenshaw pointing to the spot. And, yeah, and, and at the same page, page we have yeah. a picture of the autopsy photograph, and so you can correlate it visually yourself and see, oh, that's they, they match. Very good. Of course, Jackie said from the front, it looked just fine. So even she... Right, right. But didn't see it, even though she said he was having trouble holding his skull and brains together at the back of his head. For real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like, uh, you know, like in your book, uh, uh, Murder in Dealey Plaza, you have an image of the blasted out in the in the back of the head. That It's very dramatic because there's a lot. You're talking of about the sketch? Yeah. yeah. The sketch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, so... How much damage could there have been back there uh, if we take into account, for example, uh, the Harper fragment, which a facsimile that I'm, I'm holding here in my hand, and other uh, pieces that might have uh, blown out as well? Yeah, we know there were other pieces. They were found on, on the street. So okay. the hole was bigger than the Harper fragment. It had to be because but yeah, it's, it's, so the Harper is just a, a component, just a, a small component of, of the whole thing. Yep, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Okay, Jim. So Doug Horn figured out of the two shots to the head, David. You're yeah, saying? we have to give Doug credit for that. Yeah, uh -huh. I want to correct that. That was a real breakthrough. Problem. All the rest of us were a little. Uh, bamboozled by that. Although I must say I was puzzled by it, but I, I did not sort it out. It was Doug who did that. Very good. Very good. Very good. And he, did he discern it was from this, that ground curbside sewer? 
I don't that's, think I don't remember Doug talking about the ground side sewer shot. Uh, I, I just don't remember his ever talking about that, nor have I talked very much about it. But of course, you and I went there together and you climbed yeah. down in the sewer and concluded it was wrong angle for the other shot. The one but it was had... completely different. It was completely different. Uh, it had already been altered, that entire uh, opening yeah, but, the bottom. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true, Larry. But still, in terms of the angle, it wasn't good for the for the shot that David was contemplating at the time. I mean, when did you first realize there were two shots to the side of the head, David? Two shots from the front, you mean? Yeah, two shots well, from the only, front. Only after Doug Horn brought it up. That was that was in his five-volume set where that first appeared in print. So that's been available to the public for over 10 years now. 2009. Before that, nobody seriously considered that. They, they may have thought about it, but they didn't have any evidence for it. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good, very good. Well, so Doug really did did us a tremendous service. Yeah, Doug, it, Doug is a major domo here. Yeah, very impressive. He's, he's uh, rather reticent. He's not wild about doing interviews and the like. I think he felt he got pilloried too many times unjustly, and of course he was. Yes. He, well, he's going to be uh, in uh, Kansas City uh, next month. Oh, that's good. And he was a major presence at yeah. our last meeting in Pittsburgh in November. Uh huh. He gave a Excellent. talk and assisted in my talk. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, let me see if I can get this. Why don't I make you host? No, no, I'm looking at this conference. It's uh, going to be uh, next month. And Douglas Horn uh, is supposed to. I didn't to know he was going to be there, so that's good news. And yes. The first time I met Douglas Horn, he actually cited Larry Rivera's work about the uh, um, Secret up. Service spreading yeah. out into the Dealey Plaza. If you remember that, and that's when I first met you. And he, um, oh, way well, back then. That's when the Newcomb tapes uh, first. Uh, we first yeah, started to work on the Newcomb tapes. I, I was blown away when I first heard about those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they tell you exactly. You got to work from there. You know. You see. Yeah. You know. Uh, and see, you know, how the event unfolded based on, on their uh, interviews there, which, and the whole story is just so incredible, you know, that they were suppressed the way that they were suppressed. Yeah. And, and Have you I'm ever amazed. spoken to Tink Thompson about those interviews? No, I, I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. Uh, I, how... I have no idea what Tink would say about that because he cannot possibly accept any of that evidence in view of his yeah. position. Uh, you'd be surprised how little fanfare Larry's work has gotten on the Newcomb tapes. Oh it's, yeah, I, I agree amazing. With you. It, but it we we, <laughs> we first published the uh, the YouTube videos, Gary. Uh, I think twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen, uh, the JFK Horseman one and two, and that uh, you know the entire even with the transcripts and everything and the discussions that we had, you know, and but we I, my in my opinion it needs to be continually put yes. out there <laughs> you know hey well, okay. I, i've done a bit in my book about them too and i keep saying well this is not what we see in the zapruder film but that's what the these Hell yeah the first when, when douglas horn found out about them you know he said man this changes everything you know? yeah you know and and like i said for amazing. some people but probably not for tink <laughs> yeah awful lot of crickets going on all i hear yeah. is crickets David, has a uh, word reached uh, Rancho Mirage about the Secret Service agent actually getting in the limousine during the limo stop? Glenn Bennett. <laughs> uh, which is exactly what... The, what second uh, uh, sir, the second Secret Service man, that's a hard thing to say. Is that what you're asking about? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has the word got to Rancho Mirage? Have you heard about it before? Well, I heard about it before, but I don't think anybody else did. Well, it well, came from Hargis and Ellis. Go ahead, Larry, expand. Oh, it, right came, it, came, it came from Hargis and Ellis. They were very, very specific about that, you know? Yeah, that's good. Both of them, you know, hey, you know, and a second a Secret Service agent, uh, we almost lost him, you know, and everything yeah. he was talking yeah. about, you know? So and, give and me a photographs break. seem to corroborate this, I believe. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The ways in which they altered and obfuscated his figure uh, in the limousine, David. It's no, that now, now, yeah, I know. Now the Z film is being scrutinized in that manner, where we're getting a lot of, 
you know, uh, alteration there, airbrushing, and, you know, it just go, goes to show how much, in, you know, how overboard they went to alter this, yeah. this whole sequence there. You know, that, that was a lot of work. Well, they didn't know. have too much time. They were a little sloppy. That's yeah. right. That's right. And they left a lot of, lot of mistakes uh, in, in the film. And we're still they just didn't have time to do it right. Yeah, like yeah. flashing, um, the flashing lights in the film was another one. No, no, you know that one, uh, the, those uh, frames that uh, showed the the right uh, tail light, the brake light is off, and the left one is on. There's a couple of frames, about five or six. It's it's been airbrushed over. That's what it is. Yeah, that's likely. It's been yeah, airbrushed right over the, the brake light. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and, and in fact, the, the whole back there, the, and whole the back blink there. rate doesn't match up. There's just so many things. Well, we have a lot of eyes looking at this now, a whole lot more eyes than we used to. So yeah. we'll find uh, out. maybe uh, Jim can, uh, you know, give me uh, the screen here since. Yep. Absolutely. Because I just want to show you, you guys got something you here. You got it. <sighs> okay. Have you had any invites for big interviews by news, uh, major news media, David? I mean, it ought to well, be. Next Monday, we're scheduled with Coast to Coast. Uh, according to Wikipedia, they have 2.2 million uh, listeners. Yeah, they used to have a lot more, but yeah. they, they Yeah, they used to be at 10 million, but the Wikipedia yeah. says they're down to 2.2. I'm just yeah. That's, that's the biggest one I know of. Yeah, that's good. Ooh. I should, I should, I should read a shout to John B. Wells, David. I think he'd be thrilled to have you and Jerry on. Well, do your best. Yeah, mm -hmm. I shall. Where you got, you got it? Yeah, I'm right here. I'm just going to show you something here. Okay, screen share. Of course, we're hoping that RFK Jr. will uh, eventually speak out to the media too. I suspect he will, but I have no idea what the timeline might be. Okay, you guys, you guys see this? Yes. Okay. Okay. John Connolly, black suit and shirt. This is the actual hole. Okay. That's very the, good. After it's been sent out to the laundry. How and, and and you can see the avulsed. Uh, yeah, that you can. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to send you these images. Uh, and this is so important because this gives you an idea of the trajectory. It, this looks like a flat shot, uh, Jim, uh, perhaps from the second uh, floor of uh, uh, the uh, Dow Tax building. This is one that really has to be on well, a flat tra trajectory, if you ask me. Uh, look at, you know, this is obviously an exit uh, hole. I'm amazed that this uh, uh, image is out there. Uh, Fellow researcher from the UK sent my, sent it to me. My <laughs> inference had been this was uh, Mac Wallace from the book depository firing at uh, Connolly in the mistaken belief it was Ralph Yarborough. Well, the, the, but this is more of a flat. Uh, if I can uh, visualize this one, uh, than the one that, that penetrated the 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 wrist and the thigh. I'm, I think there's two different, obviously two different yeah, shots. Yeah, there may be. You're, you're between... arguing that this is from the Dell Tex building. I mean, um, that this is a flat enough trajectory. Uh, no, I'd have to, uh, yeah, I would have to plot this, Not you know, the in Texas the 3D Google program. Google. But it's very interesting uh, that this uh, that this exists. This evidence exists. Okay, so here we're seeing uh, obviously where Connolly, you know, his mouth is puffed, right? And uh, here again, uh, the difference uh, here is the suits. You know, Jeff K is wearing gray and he's wearing, he always wore black. You know, he's holding the stats and he's already been shot. Now, which one, which shot would this be? The uh, one that takes out his lung, you know, and he's got this pulmonary uh, condition there and you can't even yeah. breathe when, or is, would this be the uh, thigh, the wrist, obviously not the wrist because he's holding on to the, uh, to the hat there. Okay. So, uh, just uh, well, he may have been hit by more than one shot too. Right, absolutely. Yeah, two or even three. Probably. So uh, th this is uh part of the project that we've got on the Z film, you know, breaking it mm -hmm. down in data streams, you know. And I didn't want to really take over this thing here. Uh, and uh, you know, 
this is a, a clear uh, example of the extensive alteration here, you know, going on, you know. So, and this is the second agent. He's wearing the gray suit, you know, and this is equivalent to frame uh, 343. And here's what I was telling you about. Okay. Uh, you see that? Uh, I mean, that's obvious airbrushing. Oh, yeah, the there. brake light is blacked out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. How and, and, and it's like that for several frames, you know. As you, and, and look at this. Yeah. Very peculiar. Okay. Yeah, that's good. But uh, we're able to uh, get all this, discerning all this in, new information, you know, from the digital uh, quality that uh, we're able to, which I thought these uh, certain uh, people out of Hollywood were going to provide, and that never happened. All right. Because remember back uh, all these big, I, I don't know, 5K scans or something of, of the uh, Z film, you know, and, uh, right. and finding out things that we didn't know about the Z film and, it's been there all along, you know, if you ask me. So, yeah, we waited for a long time for that. It never happened. Yeah, you know, but now Just we're one, seeing uh, one side comment on Connolly. He developed pulmonary fibrosis as a result of this shot. Yeah. With him for the rest of his life, and it was a contributing cause to his death. Well, and, and it's no joke uh, having uh, a perforated lung the way he did i've seen that you know uh and it's not it's not a joke you know it's very painful they have to document you know you got to put tubes into in between your 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 ribs you know and that in itself is excruciating you know to drain the edema and the and the fluids and everything well said and uh, we've had a recent example of this uh as well uh, around january 6th when senator paul was attacked by some crazies and fractured multiple ribs and punctured his lung and made his COVID infection much, much worse. So he's now at a higher risk for injury from later COVID infections or any kind of pulmonary infection. So it's yeah, we don't want to do that to someone's lung unless they're truly your enemies. You're talking about Ron Paul? <laughs> Not Ron. Uh, Rand. Oh, but Rand. Rand Paul. Senator Rand Paul. Yeah. David, I have a number of images here, some of which are, of course, all too familiar, but yeah. others perhaps less. Let me, well, here, I'll just go directly to the article. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, very, very, uh, it's getting a pretty good response, but of course. Yeah, that was, that was good. But your audience may want to check that out. Yes, yes, for some reason. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Magic. The article, there's, we get the cover of the book and we get your diagram, David. Yeah, everything. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. What, 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 what you talk about ever so briefly, the arrows and so forth. Absolutely. Excellent. Good, good, good. And then, of course, uh, the book cover and the three, or I mentioned in particular, you'd introduce Yeah, them. your images here really were wonderful. Well done. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, happy with the images I chose. The images are great, and, and that's yeah, the big thing. And there's yeah. Malcolm Tilda. That's that's of really course. nice. No, I there. know. And how could they bury that, David? How could the Warren Report have the balls to conceal the fact that he was <laughs> shot in the right temple or the right forehead when you got the press <laughs> secretary? I mean, it's just outrageous. I think it was after this they realized they could bamboozle the American people about anything, David. Well, maybe if we had the current press secretary there, they would have listened. To <laughs> oh. oh, goodness. Ouch. So so right off the bat, if you put together two plus two. He said, hey, he said, hey Jim, he said it's a simple matter of a bullet, bullet right, right through the head. That's right. right. I know he did. Attribute it to Admiral Berkeley. I mean, how can you do better? And then the New York Times immediately is talking about a lone gunman. I mean, to see how the New York Times was used to perpetrate the fraud. I mean, they were absolutely vital. Just outrageous. Just outrageous. And then, of course, all we have about Lee in the doorway, which they were seeking to conceal so massively. Don't you love how Larry did the reconstruction, David, showing uh, 
Billy in his red and white, vertically striped short sleeves. Yes, oh, wow. That's the way it really was, too. It's very colorful, yes. <laughs> I, know, I know, but I mean, it was so heavy and obvious. This was not the same guy as the doorman. I mean, how outrageous. And then, of course, your masterful stuff on Area P. I mean, that was yeah. so fantastic. Yeah, these images are so useful. Yeah. You you must love how Larry found how Jackie's white glove highlighted the defect in earlier frames, David. 343, yeah, 343. Yes, yes. Just yes. wonderful stuff. And then, so then of course, we, we have the view from inside of the... Uh, well, this is actually Larry at the above ground sewer opening there on the top of the oh, yes. house. Those came from Garrison. Those are Garrison's guys. Uh, that oh, those was, were uh, Garrison guys? Yeah, those happened, went in, I think, the 67 when they went uh, to Dallas, you know, and uh, that and the other one where you can see him inside, you know, that was taken yeah, from above. I didn't, I think I didn't put that enough. one in the article. Yeah. Yeah, those, then, those of, are. Yeah. Then, of course, you got Larry's uh, blender view from inside the curbside. Right. Yeah. You just put a camera there and see what, you know, what comes out of it and put the car on the where X marks the spot and that's it, you know. <laughs> X marks the spot indeed. Yeah. And then, of course, how David and I were struck by Newsweek putting the, the location for the fatal shot 30 feet further down and opposite this curbside mm -hmm. sewer opening. I mean, they, they were telling us something. What uh, struck me here is the thickness of the asphalt there that had, you know, been laid onto there, you know, year after year. And we're talking about this, I think it might have been taken like in 67, 68. So you already see that, you know, that level is has been rising uh, since 1963. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, those were those were the ends of the. Yeah. The, thank you for that. Uh, those were really good pictures. It's getting a pretty good discussion. I think there's going to be a lot more. There are 33 or four comments so far where, where I've made responses or rebuttals, six or eight of them. I found, you know, I found interesting, uh, what was it, last week when we did uh, the uh, cubby hole over there with uh, um, our friend uh, there uh, with the ladder. The capsule air photograph, David. You can actually see the assassin walking away with a ladder. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that just terrific? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now what's next here, uh, you know, going forward, obviously, you know, it's, the uh, youth movement, you know, young younger generations need to get involved. You know, I think David Knight, you know, is a superstar in the making if he isn't already, you know, uh, with his, you know, uh, organization skills and his impetus. You know, I'm just amazed. Uh, he's only 50 years old and he's the guy that's right now, he's going to carry that torch. I absolutely. Uh, I'm conv convinced, you know, and uh, but. David, did we ever tell you how, Larry, they're going to have the mock trial of Leah Oswald and Larry was going to be a witness, but Larry sent them in advance how he'd done the superposition, proving that Lee was in the doorway and they cut him out of no, the No, I program. haven't heard about this, no. David, it's just outrageous. Just outrageous. Larry, tell David this story. This is so sad. These are good, supposed to be good people and we're cutting out the key witness for the whole thing to blow it apart. Larry, tell David. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that happened, you know, that was, you know, it's not <laughs> that important anymore. 2017 uh, in Houston. It, it is, it is important. They were going to have the mock trial and they asked me to come in as, a, as an expert. Yeah, I remember too. that episode. You were originally invited. Right, right. And then uh, they left me stranded in Houston. <laughs> he sent him, see, in advance what he was going to present, David, and at that yes. point they yeah, kind of remember all no, that. And, and, and this, uh, this is why I didn't even have any electricity in Puerto Rico. You know, the hurricanes had just hit, and I was living day to day, you know, with a gallon of gasoline for a little generator. You know, it was it was crazy. And then uh, at the 11th hour, they said, you're out. You know, oh, well, what happened? Oh, you guys and Don Fox were t uh, talking about anti-Semitic uh, subjects, you know, on uh, – uh, the uh, new JFK show number 88 or something like that. Yeah, this and, was an excuse. This and they went, and they went, uh, we know you didn't say anything despective against uh, Jews, you know, but this Don Fox, you know, and, and Gary King, you know, ringing this bell and everything. 
<laughs> yeah, I just rang it. <laughs> so you, that's how they got rid of me. <laughs> yeah, when you're reading um, Patton <laughs> Bomb, he's one I could ring the bell there. So that was fine. <laughs> so anyway, and then uh, Jim showed up at the conference and a certain person was there talking about the trial and Jim got on the, on the microphone and said, man, you know, what is wrong with you people? And he let him have a piece of his mind. Let's just put it that way. Well, it's outrageous, David. Barry's work was so brilliant. It was so perfect. And it was yeah. scientific, objective, and definitive. Which is the thing about uh, uh, science, you know, and the way it was written up. You know, uh, you have a... It's written up as a scientific paper, you know, with methods, methodology, and, and, and you know, you're bringing all the... Uh, information is how you got there and then you expect other other peers to review it and say okay uh, i did what you said you know in in that paper you know but i got a different result never happened just never happened at all you know and then you got this other prayer man thing you know going on and that's not even scientific not even close to being uh what uh you know the man in the, uh, in the doorway uh, paper was you know and just you know what can you do Obviously, you know, they sell books. <laughs> Prayer Man, Jim. Ever heard of him? Oh, yeah, that was a big Ralph's and K thing. No, 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 not even close. All right. Yeah, Larry, you want to exp expand on Prayer Man? How, how are we doing, Gary? Uh, we got about half of our half hour glass okay, to go. Okay. So we got about that's, 20 minutes. That's that's very good. David, would I be right? This is really medical scientific and not primarily primary and political, motivational and so forth. Is there any discussion about uh, the players and who is responsible in the new book? No, not in our book. Uh, that was not our focus. We yeah. wanted to really limit our discourse and not get into the somewhat grayer areas, although I'm keenly interested myself in this area, but it's not in our book. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to confirm from the pages I've read so far, that was my inference, and I wanted to confirm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you want to elaborate on the prayer man thing, Larry? I'm not really uh, that much. I just heard about it, and uh, they uh, wrote a book, and... You know, supposedly they identified Lee Oswald as a man in the Wigman. If you've seen the Wigman film and, and who's in the corner and there will be a north, there will be northwest corner of the of the doorway over there in, the, in that corner. Uh, and you can see a figure there, but uh, there is so very little definition to work with. OK, at least with the man in the doorway, we were able to get. A lot, in fact, the entire, uh, both Billy Lovelady and Lee Oswald, a lot more definition to work with and be able to do over overlays with the prayer man. It's just such a small area and it's blurry. And uh, Bart Camp, I believe, is the author of the book. And uh, he's out of uh, the Netherlands, I believe. Uh, and he, you know, and they have their theory there that Billy Lovelady's is actually doormat. Okay. Um, yeah, which... it's, it's just more bullshit, in other words. <laughs> I, just, I just pulled up some slides in case there was anything we wanted to catch, capture mm -hmm. that we haven't already addressed here. This is all pretty familiar stuff coming to the fore. And of course, the uh, Z film. Have, have you had any new insights about Zapruder based upon your latest research? Well, if I did, it's all in my. Pittsburgh talk from last November, which is online, and and the link is cited in my book. Okay, that's uh, that's Costello's uh, Z film. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I show? Can I show you mine? Yeah, <laughs> hang on a sec. Absolutely. <laughs> let me let me switch over. Give you the make you a host again, my friend. Yeah, Jim, can you send me that um, Costello sure. Z film? Sure. Go ahead, Larry. I've made you host. Okay. Just a second. I'm going to prove it. All 
Okay. What kind of what kind of informal feedback are you getting, David, on the book? I mean, aren't a lot of people reaching out to you? Not a lot. Um, probably fewer than ten so far. And, and these are people who know me and okay. have my email address. You see that? But very few people have my email address, so I wouldn't expect too many personal contacts. Okay. okay. This you is interesting, that? David. I've never seen this version before. Go ahead. It's a lot lighter. Uh, it see, it's digitally cleaned up. Look. Comment on it, Larry, as you go forward. Did it freeze oh, up? You, you can see the, the usual. Yeah. Did you deliberately stop? Don't you want to okay, yeah, me, yeah. Just, even just stopping right here, you can see all the all the uh, airbrushing and the uh, the greenish uh, haze that permeates. You know, uh, Nelly had was supposed to have uh, let go of that bouquet a long time ago. Yet it's still you know floating here. You see this? And I just did a random stop here. You know, here this is a gray suit. This is not Connolly. All right. And then they also got some uh, airbrushing here and here and here. You know, it's just outrageous once you get uh, this type of uh, here again. You see this? Look at, you know, it just changes here. The, the green uh, uh, haze here. And look how it's cut off here. See this? Uh, amazing uh, stuff here. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, the curve. Yeah. Oh, and here's the second agent. All right. And he's arranging bodies, you know, from uh, the people that I've spoken to, you know, and, uh, you know, because Connolly and Nelly are on the floorboards here, you know, and uh, so uh, very interesting footage here that uh, very clean. And even at the end here, you can see that. There we go. Let me just uh, back up a little bit. There, there he is. See right here? Now he's in the back. That's not JFK. This guy, he's already in the back there, you know? So that's, uh, I just wanted to show you mine. <laughs> oh, you don't want to go all the way through? All the way through? No, I did already. So that's what we're uh, now finding out, you know, the extensive, extensive uh, alteration of the Z film, which we knew, but, you know, even more than uh, we had uh, known about about previously. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'll just pull up some more images. I mean, you know, this was a Godzilla, as you say. We know all about the camera and the split and unsplit and all John's brilliant work on the film and his introduction. David, I'm really amazed how many are still not familiar with John's work on the Manner well, they're, with, not, they're not serious researchers if they've ignored it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Kind of stunning in many ways. And then, then of course, uh, you're special with a five hit and Larry's horseman, <laughs> JFK horseman, and the holes in the shirt and the jacket. See, that, and the, that's the one. That, that Back up a little bit. That's the one that Marty shots uh, right there. That's the one he said. This is this is impossible. You cannot, you know, uh, explain this here. You know, see how low that uh, on the uh, on the shirt is. But then you got it coming out of his throat. Come on, man. Yeah, this is all uh, this is yeah, all pictured yeah. in our book. This exact image is in you our know, book. Come on, man. So that's what and and, and that uh, with uh, the American uh, University speech, you know, those were his, his two uh, main uh, thesis for the book. Nothing. I don't need to prove anything else, you know. So, you mean that it's ridiculous to suggest that could have come out the throat? Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. We have a whole appendix in our book about uh, Spectre's escapades with these images, of including course. other ones. Yeah, yeah. David, and, it's outrageous. I mean, how blatantly they perpetrate fraud on the American people. I mean, it, yeah. Have we and, ever had a greater case? I mean, you got the moon landing, you got nine eleven, but this was so personal. Yeah, yeah. And he had a lot to do with it, <laughs> Arlen Specter. Yeah, should I pull ring up, my bell? I'll pull up a few more in case we want to comment on any of it. Were you, was someone saying that this this the mark here, Boswell's mark, didn't correspond to the shirt and the jacket? Did we hear that or not? David, does it doesn't Bo, a Boswell's mark here correspond to the shirt and the jacket? 
I think uh, regarding the uh, the Parkland doctors, you know, the documentary that came out last year, uh, which is so stunning, which just, I mean, how can you refute this, you know, and especially that they uh, didn't want this to be published and it wouldn't come out until they were all, you know, gone. And uh, and it's so obvious, you know, that the difference of in what they saw at Parkland with what the official version of, you know, Bethesda and Walter Reed and all that, you know, is just so incredible, you know. Yeah. And and and, and that uh, those doctors, you could feel it that so many years later they was they were still feeling, you know, this uh, you know right. this thing that they had been carrying for all their lives. You know. Yeah. 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 That's a very the nice image they, there. The threat of loss of, of their of careers, the if you ever yeah, talk the, about. This image is also in our book. So is this one. <laughs> yeah. Good, David. Good. Yeah, Good. it's all in in one appendix. So you can just slide back and forth between images and see how Excellent. impossible all of this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Roy discovered there was actually a, a, a damage to the upholstery. Nick's. The yeah, Nick's, yeah, Nick's in the, in the upholstery. Fascinating. And of course, for changing. This is such a good version of the Ultra and the Six. I really like this one. It's very, yeah. very clean. Mm -hmm. And of course, the windshield. Until, until until we got a hold of the negative, Jim, with uh, David Knight. That is incredible. You know, we have yeah, the that's negative. A, that's a great shot. That the, one, the previous one, two two five, showing oh, yeah. that the window yeah. was yeah. damaged way yeah. before the Alkin Six photograph. Yes. Yes. Very good. Of course, no, of course, absolutely. I, I, oh, probably around uh, two eleven or two twelve. I agree. I agree. Well, you know, when it was reviewed um, in Washington D.C. at NPIC, uh, they chose. I think it was Z one ninety one. And when I looked at the images mm -hmm. at the sixth floor museum, I could see it pretty well at one ninety three. One ninety three. Yeah. But only in, in 255, you're seeing the reaction, you know, uh, yeah. afterwards, of course. But it's yeah, just a few 193. Later, but yeah. And 193 happens to be the point up, up at the top of Elm Street where the car is completely stationary for about two or three seconds, yeah, as seen from the cubby hole. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. We've been there. <laughs> so that shot may have been made from a greater distance than I would have. Oh, this is good, too. This is in our book, too. Yeah. The, yeah. The, two, the two tiny holes in JFK's yeah. cheek that had to be plugged because they were leaking. What caused that? Yeah. You're yeah, so two more bullets? No, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Those glass yeah. shards. Glass yeah. glass shards, of course, glass caused glass. this. I love that. From the David, windshield. How, how could they do that JFK revisit it and not use as your proof that the magic bullet theory is anatomically? Well, I think honest. Oliver Stone didn't really grasp the whole picture here. I, not, I agree. Uh, I agree. A medical expert. But didn't he just leave it up to De Eugenio? And I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, even even Oliver Stone couldn't miss that, David. That's simple enough for a child. We, I mean, we had but, a couple of shows where we went and we and remember we uh, there, there were so many other you know topics that could have been covered that were not. Yeah, you know? there was there wasn't anything that we didn't know thirty years before that was brought up in his new right. film. And that's that I attribute to De Eugenio. I don't think Oliver Stone really was involved. Here's your book, which is oh, selling. thank you, Jim. This is very nice, and it's now available in Kindle and hardcover. Very good. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful, David, and a very reasonable price, by the way, for a five hundred plus page paperback for twenty twenty three ninety nine. That's excellent, David. Over five hundred pages. Oh, yeah. oh, go back, go, go, go back, go back to the previous, the one with the arrows. The no, no, there you go, there you go. Now nah, that's the one I wanted. To. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can finish with this one. Okay. Any oh. sequence? Any type of sequence here? Well, oh. I think the the occipital shot, the shot from the rear, probably became came first. Yeah. And then we can debate about the two frontal shots, which came first. That's a tricky question, and I don't have any definite position on it. I think a few people do, but I'm not sure that we really know. Could they have been simultaneous? Well, they were very close, I think. That's the problem. Wow. wow. And that's the one that uh, the green is the one that uh, uh, creates the, the flap. 
Yeah, well, that, yeah, that creates the temple flap that we see in the autopsy photograph. And of course, the bullet that caused that is the same bullet that blew out the back of the head and caused the big hole. So not that's not a direct hit? No, the green arrow is a direct hit. The bullet went through the skull and blew out the back of the head. Mm -hmm. And the red? The red produced the metallic trail we see on the x-rays today. Okay. Ah. Uh... The red produced a metallic trail, but it was the green that caused the both of flap and the blowout at the back of yes, the head. Yes, both. 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 Both the temple flap that was observed oh, at the and autopsy the and also by daily plasma. Oh, so the green, the green is the, the temple, the temple, the... Uh, yeah, that's the temple the area. Shot. Okay, yeah. the, the one above it, the... It right. also caused damage uh, to the to the bone and, uh, in the, inside the skull. Okay, okay. That, that's, that's one discussed above... discussed extensively in our book. That's one uh, above the eye. The, 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 the radiologist, the diagnostic radiologist hired by the government missed that wound, but Mike Chesser picked it up. You're so talking about objective that? evidence of that shot, not just... Well, the just... green was the curb, sewer curb, wasn't it, shot, the green one? The sewer well, I curb. think we, we can disagree about that. I don't really know for sure where that temple shot came from. So you can, you can argue for the sewer, you can argue for the site on the overpass uh, where there's another uh, sewer that you can call through. So right, right, I'm, right. I'm open-minded about that. That's not a big deal to me. We, we, But it's we know from the x-rays and the photographs and the witnesses that there had to be a shot that went in the green arrow. So uh, of, of the green and the red, which from the Quinshin uh, photograph or, or drawing, which one is that? Uh, try that again. Whose photograph? From the Quentin Schwinn. Uh, oh, Quentin Schwinn. Now that would be the red arrow. The red arrow. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then of course we got Malcolm Barrett. We got all the. Yeah, he, the he 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 obviously bomb. saw that 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 red arrow. That's what he's pointing at. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah, did Charles yeah, Crenshaw, yeah, the yeah, physician yeah. who was there in in Parkland. Yeah. Yeah. That's the the that's yeah, the that's red the arrow. one. Leave that one up for a little while. This one. The one before that. Oh, we rolled back there. You mean you must mean this? Yeah, the, the one where they're all showing where the blowout was. Yeah, oh, that that's... was the green arrow. That's from the green arrow. Right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, uh, mention here now, uh, looking at the Z film, and you've got uh, frame 312, 311, 312 where JFK's head is tilted at a specific angle, 60 degrees, okay? Uh, if anything that would hit him in the head at that point would, you know, in my view, would have to come from a lower angle. Uh, like Kellerman said, an upshot into the vehicle. Uh, and Dr. Mantic just said that, hey, it could be uh, the could storm. Be rain. It could be, or there's another one down the, down the way, which is true. Uh, could have been that one. I agree 100%. In fact, I'm going to look up uh, the plans, you know, that I have and uh, plot something from there. Uh, now, the tilt of the head, I think, is very, very important. Yeah, uh, if, exactly. And you've got 312, 311, and it's very specific tilt towards the front, forward. And I've measured it out. Three, it's a 60-degree tilt. Now, that would place that uh, shot as far as I'm concerned, from a, a lower plane uh, to traverse the area and come out the back of the head uh, the way that we have been talking about here tonight. Meaning you think that came from the curbside super opening? Absolutely. And I'm not, uh, it's not just me. There's many, 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 many before me. Uh, Penn Jones, Jim Garrison, Vincent Salandria, John Judge, uh, Tim, uh, Tom Wilson, the guy that did the... Uh, Remember the men who killed uh, Kennedy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so, uh, but hey, and uh, the blender model, you know, and everything else. Yeah, just anything here where the there's a distribution of metallic particles you're talking about, David. That was from yeah, that's the red arrow. That's the red arrow. Yeah, that's okay, the red. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. It's just overall shooting sequence. And yeah, the uh, uh, replication, and of course a Harper fragment. Hey, David, right here. <laughs> David, David, how 
How could the HSC think they could get away with reconstituting the head and not have not only a fist size, but the whole missing back of the head described in mathematical detail and Bethesda autopsy report? How do they think they could get away with that? Well, their their expert didn't even know that the back of the head was missing. You're kidding, Dave. What kind of an no, expert? No, he didn't know. That? They didn't tell him that. <laughs> what kind of an expert is he, that? Well, it was a misinformed expert. I, it's easy to get away with things if you leave <laughs> details like that out. What troubles me, David, is that Cyril was on that panel. I mean, why wouldn't Cyril talk endlessly about the magic bullet, but he's never talked about the hole in the back of the head being covered up by no, the HSCA? Cyril isn't he's... that good at reading x-rays. I think he would admit that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fascinating. You mean he might he might have been duped himself by this report? I think he was partially duped, yes. And I don't blame him for it. That was not his expertise. He has wonderful but, but, expertise. But David, but this is after one. six seconds been out. He knows the uh, diagrams. He knows there was this big hole in the back of the head. I mean, that just bothers me tremendously, let me say. I'll, I'll leave it at that, but it troubles me. <laughs> and here, then, we get this variation. To me, this is as damning as it gets. And as you know, yeah, the when, Larry Sa give it away. Yeah. Yeah, when Larry Sabato came out with nonsense at UVA, because I taught there, I actually published in the Daily Cavalier, this image and took him to task. And there we see the skull flap, you know, well shown in the diagram. Yeah. And here's that Newsweek where they got the limo further down, not here, but down yeah. here. 30 yeah. feet after the supposed headshot in what the What a shot, room. man. This guy feet. was a good shot. Yeah. yeah. I know like uh, when when Jim and and, uh, and Jesse Ventura went to uh, test that out, you know, at uh, remember Jim? The, yeah. the uh, shooting from uh, the uh, rig uh, that uh, platform, you know, and running that uh, right out, out in Ventura County. Yeah. Yeah. That was so much fun, and Jesse couldn't. What happened? To, one tell hit, us. And, one hit, and three repetitions with a immobile target because it was three bales of hay. And here you have that above ground, Larry, and you say this was a yeah, uh, yeah. That's so yeah, that's the one above, and that see that's right at the end of the triple overpass. It's got that cement railing, see, right. and then from there the rest is picket fence. Right, and and if you see, uh, there's some images that show that area has been uh, white, uh, blacked out, or whited out. You know, there I saw a, a picture that Richard Hook uh, showed me one time. I think I have it somewhere. That uh, the first maybe uh, four or five feet uh, were left of the cement abutment there, going to the left. That was uh, you know uh, altered, taken out of the of that of that image. And you could go into there, and I think you have the next one that shows him inside of there. Those are Actually, garrison. I just don't have it here in this set. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and garrison. Those are garrison's uh, investigators. Uh, those are pictures from garrison. So if you want to, you know, they were doing uh, good work. They were doing good work. Yeah, they were on the right track. <laughs> they were. But the thing is, that he would send track. he would send people to Dallas, and nobody would talk to them. Of course. Yeah, and here's a shot from inside. And yeah. then you have inside and where the limit would look like across the street. Yeah, look at all the space there that had already been, uh, you know, filled yeah, out. You know, already filled up. Look at the levels of blacktop, you know? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Wow. Well, David, somehow it's all come together. I think your books are going to have tremendous impact. And selling like hotcakes like that is just phenomenal. So I think this is going to represent a major breakthrough. Yeah, it's overdue. Yeah. And, yeah, the and people, and our citizens popular, should know what happened. Having a more popular reader friendly version was indispensable. Mm -hmm. So, so how do we get an autographed copy, Dr. Matt? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very easy. You send me a book plate, which is just a simple piece of paper. I will sign it and you stick it inside the book. There you go. How about that? How about that? What if I buy the book and send it to you and you send it back? You can do that too. It's just more tedious for you. Okay. Larry, uh, Larry, further questions for David on oh, this? Oh, it's been a fantastic evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's been an honor. Yeah, thanks for joining us. All well, right. everyone there, Gary and okay. Larry. Yeah.
Hey, right, I guess we'll call this, Andy. You, you and you and, uh, Jerry are going to be making quite a few rounds, I predict. Well, let's hope so. It would be good for the country. We I don't do. need this personally, but I think the country does. Yes. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. So you uh, say Jerry? Yeah, 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 I guess we'll a, call it on that. Our yeah. hourglass is gone, and we've got another show in the back. It's been a new JFK Thank show. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll Thank see you, you next week. Dr. Mantic, Larry Rivera, Jim Fetcher, and myself, Gary King. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good night.